rest of people, for the whole of humankind, because we enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. So the reason Almighty God is calling us the best amongst all the peoples is because we have to convey the message of truth. Call people towards the truth, enjoy them to the truth and forbid them from doing wrong. So it's compulsory on the Muslims. And there are several other verses in the Quran, like Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, which says, one of the criteria to go to Jannah is to call people towards the truth. Any brother? Yes, brother. After the show, I read a uh, comment on Twitter, on SRK, Shah Rukh Khan's Twitter, that he said that post-show he had some discussion with you. And he has mentioned that uh, after a post-show I had a uh, discussion with Dr. Zakir Naik and it was very enlightening. I would like to know what was that enlightening session with Dr. Uh, Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, after the show was over, I did chat with Shah Rukh Khan for about half an hour. And it was a very good experience. I cannot discuss everything because many things are personal. It would be wrong on me to say in public. I was meeting for the first time. It was the first time I met him personally, though there are some common friends who are his friends and my friends. But this is the first time meeting him personally. And one thing is for sure, that I am happy that I maintain my policy of not to just rely on the news. But before the show and which everyone may be aware that it comes in the media, many people, many of my friends have told, you know, Shah Rukh Khan is not a practicing Muslim and he's not happy to be a Muslim. And he normally gives comments against Islam and he does this and that. I personally have not heard it personally on the television. I have not heard because I watch television very little. But because it were comments, I follow the verse of the Quran. Quran says in Surah Hujra chapter 49 verse number 6 that whenever you get a message, check it up before you pass it on to the third person. The same thing what I use with anyone asking comment, like Barakhada has asked me on Osama bin Laden. I said, I don't know. Same thing. Even though hearing negative comments of Shah Rukh Khan, I always said, Allah Alam. But what I heard him saying on the show, I'm not talking in the chat after the show. What I heard him on the show, I felt, irrespective whether he's practicing or not. But his answers were far better than most of the Muslims on the show. Not counting, of course, Mawlana Mahmood Madmi. He's a close friend of mine. MashaAllah, he's a practicing Muslim. But leaving aside him, what answers he gave, Compared to all the other Muslims on the show, his answers were more correct. And he rightly agreed, saying that, you know, that though he does film acting and singing and dancing, he says it is haram, that was good of him. And he says that he has less knowledge. But he also said that for correct knowledge, you should ask the scholars and the ulmas and the maulanas. So his answers were far superior than the other people for Muslims the talk show. And after the show, one comment I like to make, that while discussing on the issue of Muslim identity, he asked me, Dr. Zakir Naik, he said, Dr. Zakir Sahib, what is your view? How important is it to keep a beard and wear the cap? So giving an analogy, there it wasn't a talk show, there was no barakadat. So I could explain to Brother Shah Rukh Khan more easily and, you know, without any interruption. So I told him that when you appear for an examination, there are some questions which have one mark, some questions have ten marks, some question at 20 marks. The Muslim identity, wearing the cap and the beard, though it's not of utmost importance, but it is important, it may carry maybe one mark. You know, behaving, practically being honest, speaking the truth, these points about Islam, the practice, may carry 10 marks, may carry 5 marks. So, though keeping a beard is not the most important, you can miss the one marks, and concentrate on the 10 marks and 5 marks and 20 marks. But if someone wants to score distinction, he will try and even get this one mark. For example, when we appeared for the medical examination, we tried even to get the half mark because we want to score above 90. So when you want to score above 90, this is very important. Beard is important and cap is important. It's a part of the sunnah. But if someone doesn't keep a beard, you cannot say that he's not a Muslim. You cannot say he's not a Muslim doesn't sport a beard or doesn't wear a cap. But, oh, you have given a very good analogy. So you like the example that it is important, but may carry one mark, two marks. The more important is, is the amal. The other things about being honest, about offering salah, not doing shirk. This is of more importance. And as I mentioned even in my answer to the talk show, that if a person does not keep a beard, it doesn't come in the 70 major sins. You know, there is a scholar by the name of Imam al-Dahabi. 
and he has listed the 70 major sins in Islam. First being the shirk, then being murder, going down the line. But the beard doesn't appear. That does not mean it's not a sin. Some scholars say that it is a sunnah, mustahab. That's encouraging. Some scholars say that it is farad to keep a beard. But whatever it is, no one puts it in the major sin. Either it's a minor sin or it's a very important sunnah. So it's not part of the major sin. Hope that answers. That's a good clarification. Uh, may we have my brother put forward this question. May we have your name and profession, please. I'm Obed Khan. Um, in that program on NDTV, Shahrukh Khan had made a comment that for a Muslim, to look like a Muslim is not important, but to feel like a Muslim is important. I would like to hear your comment on that. To look like a Muslim, I would say, is not the most important. But to feel like a Muslim, again, feeling may be different as I gave the earlier answer. That being honest is more important than wearing a beard and wearing the cap. But being honest and wearing the cap and the beard is much better than only being honest without the beard. But a person who's proud to be a Muslim would always like to show that he's a Muslim. So if you're proud to be a Muslim, for example, when a person passes medical degree, you know, he becomes a doctor. When he gets MBBS degree and he puts a doctor in front of his name. Why? Because he's proud to be a doctor. The person who's proud to be a Muslim, he would be proud to show that he's a Muslim. And this is one of the labels that the Muslim has. That is wearing a beard and wearing a cap. Hope that answers To comment before I put forward questions you could ask, we have Shahjini Ibrahim Hassan Sidhi. He asks, in fact, they fear the young Zakir sir. They need to show their beliefs is right. They don't think that Islam is most growing religion without the help of the media. Allah knows best. Then we have Brother Akib who says, I'm a practicing Muslim and I have myself been subjected to typification and biases many a time. But I feel NDTV and Burqa are one of the best things around. I agree Zakir Naik should have been given more time to speak, but it's a short time show and all is not possible. Shah Rukh has spoken most wisely and said what Islam actually says except one or two points which we all are humans are bound to err. Kudos to NDTV and Barkha, but yeah, KK, Padamsi, VC, Jamia and Soha spoke their whims. As I said that what he spoke about Islam was far better than most of the other Muslims in the show. And but natural, the view that the people normally have, I don't know what he is or not. But when I spoke to him after the show and what I heard the answer in the show, and when I spoke after the show, at least what I experienced, at least he is not at all feeling apology to be a Muslim. He is happy to be a Muslim, unlike what people portray. So at least my opinion about him, good, I did not agree with the opinion of the others. I may be wrong, people may know him better than me, I've only met him once, but what I heard live on the talk show, and what I had a discussion after the show, at least my opinion about him is that fine, he agrees, he does something wrong, but he is proud to be a Muslim, and he would love to learn more about Islam, and that is what is Islam always believes, that not to just hear what people say, but at least my opinion about him is that not what people talk about him. When I met him personally, you are the different person. Yes, brother. Yeah, welcome. Taruk Khan again and again, but of late I have observed that he is, I mean, that is what he says, that he is offering namaz, and he plans to go for Hajj, inshallah, this year. Was it, I mean, I don't know, it's because of interaction with you or what has made him, Allah has given him hidayah to pray namaz. Now he is often tweeting that I'm going for namaz. And he says that this year I intend to go for hajj, inshallah. May Allah give him good hidayah. I don't know, but I do know that there are common friends between him and me. And he has confessed with me that he has seen many of my DVDs. And pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may give hidayah to all of us and may get us closer to the truth of Islam. The analysis continues after this break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the program. TV talk shows and analysis. 
Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Zakir bhai, in the show, Kabir Khan made a comment saying that, you know, if a mother is wearing hijab and the daughter adopts this habit of the mother, then this is not free will. But if the mother is not wearing a hijab and the daughter adopts this habit of wearing a hijab, this is free will. Do you accept this definition of free will given by Kabir Khan? This definition will be applicable to some people, especially to Kabir Khan. <laughs> Because Kabir Khan, he told that he was born in a Muslim family. I think maybe that is the reason he is calling himself a Muslim. Maybe he has no free will. You know, if he had a free will, he would have said he is not a Muslim. So the definition does agree to him that he has not been given a free will. Therefore, though being a born a Muslim family, he calls himself a Muslim. So this definition does apply to him. And it feels that he had no free will to say he is not a non-Muslim, if I agree with it. As far as normally what we see, that there are many of the children who follow the parents. I do agree most of them do it by blind belief. If the father is a Hindu, the children are Hindu. If the parents are Muslim, the children are Muslim. If parents are Christian, the children are Christian. I do agree to a great extent that many do blind belief. But some of them question the parents. Some of them may do because it's part of religion. Some may do because it is part of culture. But many children, they question the parents. And after questioning the parents, they may get convinced what their parents are doing right. And they may continue. So these people now, out of free will, they are continuing what the parents are doing. Some people question their parents and they aren't convinced. And yet they continue doing it, maybe because of peer pressure. Maybe because they are afraid that they cannot go against their parents. But on the other hand, some people who when they question their parents and they aren't convinced, then they change their ideology. And they change their behavior. So these people again, out of free will, they are changing. So you can't say for sure that just because the mother is wearing a hijab, the daughter wears, that means no free will. And if mother doesn't wear hijab and then daughters wear, then it's free will. This is totally wrong. But even if I agree with Kabir, in the Islam Research Foundation, there are hundreds or maybe a thousand girls who are not wearing hijab and their mothers don't wear hijab, but after coming to a foundation, Hundreds and thousands of them, within few weeks or couple of months, they have started wearing hijab. So if his definition that if the mother doesn't wear and the daughters wear means free will, so by free will, in Bombay itself, only coming by a foundation, hundreds and thousands have started wearing hijab. And furthermore, many of the ladies, after watching my programs on the satellite channel, maybe hundreds and thousands of them have started wearing hijab, not in India, throughout the world. So if this is his definition of free will, then Alhamdulillah, when these logical people, when they hear the logical reason why hijab should be worn. So unfortunately, unfortunately, I do agree that the majority in India, they wear hijab as part of culture or they wear hijab because it's a religion without knowing the reason. Some of them, after learning the reason, they continue. But the point to be noted is that if we convince the youngsters, and the ladies with reason, logic and science why hijab is worn and the reason of hijab in Islam is to protect the women then I feel majority, if not all the ladies who are logical they will wear the hijab that's the reason there are many non-Muslims accepting Islam throughout the world and amongst the people accepting Islam whether India or abroad two-thirds of them are women So if hijab subjugates the women, then why are the American women who are accepting Islam? Why are the European women who are accepting Islam, they are donning hijab? So hijab is there to protect the women. And everyone has a right to agree or disagree. And based on that, but if you speak logically, and if you explain Islam to them logically, I feel majority of the humans will agree with the points that I mentioned in Islam. Jazakallah, Dr. Zakir. We have two, three comments, you know, on the web. We have Mehnaz Chi who says, I completely agree. Dr. Naik deserves to be in a better place and the lady, Barkhadat, seemed to have no knowledge of who Dr. Naik is. I disagree with that statement. Dr. Zakir disagrees. Barkhadat will surely be knowing who I am. That is the reason they had me on the show. That is the reason when she spoke to me the first time in the show, she said that you come on TV more than me. <laughs> and when she asked the third question, she said that I know 
that you love answering questions from the audience. So I disagree with that statement that she doesn't know me. She knew me, but she being an expert moderator. She really moderated, not uh, with honesty, but she had a point of view. And as I said earlier, that it depends upon the integrity and the sincerity of the moderator and the producer to project the people who are there on the show. I think the sister's misunderstanding stands corrected. We have Nadia Jamal who says, I totally agree, Dr. Zakir hardly was given the chance to speak and Brother Zakir in future should avoid sharing the stage with Jahil Muslims, especially like Soha Ali Khan and Kabir Khan, who don't even know what Islam is all about and were arguing that Muslim lady wears hijab only if she sees her mother wearing it. I have no idea in what kind of a world they are living. New generation are more practicing than their parents. I believe, alhamdulillah. And truly I found Soha and Kabir highly disgusting. They are not Muslim. So why to call them for discussions on Muslims? And lastly, we have Arshad Hussain Sheikh who says, Lady Barkha is a commercial commodity and so is SRK, Kabir, Soha and Karan. Don't these guys seriously, folks? Little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Their opinions don't make a tiny bit difference towards what Islam and Muslims stand for. There is no other interpretation of Islam and a Muslim other than what is said in the Holy Quran. See, more Quran and the Hadith. Either you are in or you are out of the circle. There is no room for so-called moderate or liberal Islam or a Muslim, and there is no such word called extremist or fundamentalist, rightly said by Dr. Zakir, that either you practice or you don't, simple as that. I think Dr. Zakir would like to comment something on that. There's a person who the right analogy. Maybe uh, what I'm just putting across is straightforward comments, you know, of, of the people. Some may be right, some may not be right, but that is their opinion. I say you either say he's a Muslim or a pseudo-Muslim. Muslim or pseudo-Muslim. Or you can say who is a practicing Muslim, partially practicing Muslim or non-practicing Muslim. So non-practicing Muslim can be called a pseudo-Muslim, right terminology. There's nothing like moderate Muslim. You know, Muslims, if he's a Muslim, he's moderate. I mean, and you can't say a person is an extremist Muslim. And I say, I'm an extremist Muslim. I'm extremely kind, I'm extremely merciful, I'm extremely loving, I'm extremely just, I'm extremely honest. So to be a practicing Muslim, you have to be an extremist. You can't say I am partially honest, when it benefits me, I'm honest. When it does not benefit, I'm not honest. So these are terminologies, loose terminologies made by people and how it has evolved. So these loose terminologies used by the media, extremist and fundamentalist, these, if you go back into history, they were used for somebody else earlier. If you have heard my talk on terrorism and jihad, etc., and I've clarified that this word fundamentalist was first used for the Christians. Those who believe that the message of the Bible is not from God, every word, every letter is from God. And now today, in the new definition of Oxford Dictionary, the fundamentalist means a person who strictly adheres to the ancient teachings of any religion. The new definition is slightly changed. The fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the ancient doctrines of religion, especially Islam. And so though it was used in the early part of the 20th century for the Christians, today it's used for the Muslims. So this is how they keep on changing. But really fundamental is the person who follows the fundamentals. So if you have to be a good Muslim, you have to follow the fundamentals of Islam. If you have to be a good Hindu, you have to follow the fundamentals of Hinduism. If you have to be a good mathematician, you have to follow the fundamentals of mathematics. Jazakallah, brother Zakir. Any further questions from our brothers here? Yes, brother, we'll just ask. Then we'll come back on the front. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa salam wa My name is Farhan and I'm a student. Uh, Kabir Khan alleged that the definition of Islam that you gave was too narrow. So I would like to know your comments on that. Like, does the definition of Islam, what you said, does it change or it remains the same? The brother asked that Kabir Khan said that the definition of Islam is very narrow. I said Islam means a person who submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want to know the meaning of a word, any word, where do you look? Look in the dictionary. If you want to know the meaning of any English word, you go to the dictionary. You don't just say it off the cuff. And if you want to verify whether the person has said right or wrong, go to the dictionary. So you open any Arabic dictionary. Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. Or salam, which means peace. It's also derived from the Arabic word silm, which means to submit your will to God. Submit. So Islam actually means peace acquired by submitting your will to God. And anyone who submits his will to God is called as a Muslim. So this is an Arabic word. I don't know how much does Kabir Khan know about Arabic. So person who does not know Arabic, you ask him the meaning of Arabic word, 
it is like the person said you are asking a driver about the treatment of medical disease i don't know how much arabic does kabir khan know and what right does he has to comment on arabic what he doesn't know so this is how the media you know person doesn't know arabic and asking the meaning of an arabic word so what we realize that if you want to know you go to the authentic sources and the best definition to know about muslim is go to the quran quran says that many places about muslim called as muslim 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 means one a person who bow to the will of allah in surah al imran chapter 3 verse 64 and many other places hope that's yes any further questions yes uh, assalam alaikum this is aman bukhari barkha that uh, doubted your uh, reply which you had uh, tried to give about the talibans and how the american media they manipulate the the public and uh, according to her cnn and bbc are the gospels for her now the very same cnn and bbc had said that iraq has weapons of mass destruction and this was being relayed on these channels day after day week after week and months after months and in spite of america invading iraq it was not able to find any weapons of mass destruction my question to barkhadat is come on barkhadat where is your answer to this where are the weapons of mass destruction your comments please sir these examples can be given in schools and i don't agree with you not that i am a fan of saddam hussein <laughs> neither do i say that saddam hussein is a patriotic muslim but you know america attacks iraq and puts a sanction embargo that no medicine no food should go there because of which more than half a million children were killed because of sanction putting sanctions who's to blame and when they attack iraq they don't find any weapons of mass destruction who's to blame i would blame george bush it is clear why can't she read between the lines and she's a woman of the media or maybe you know i don't know why she it's very evident that even when saddam hussein was arrested he had a trial in wait commerce whether just i don't know irrespective what he has done in islam we have to give a fair chance to the person who is the culprit or the person who you think is responsible i doubt whether you have given a free chance fine i do agree he has done many evils maybe but surely there was no proof of weapons of mass destruction no proof and has anyone condemned george bush fine i know later on many people did say that he stayed number one and when the survey came in america and throughout the world who stays number one is it bin laden is it saddam hussein or is it george bush and do you know in all the polls whether conducted in america or uk or throughout the world george bush he sweep the polls <laughs> the lowest he got was 73% and some votes he got more than 80% now when people compared americans compared who is a terrorist bin laden saddam hussein or george bush even in the bbc poll george bush sweep the polls now doesn't barkhadat know about that so very very comfortably they take what they want from the bbc and they don't take what they don't want and this is not again publicized it comes once and finish so barkhadat is a woman of the media the same bbc says that this is a public opinion has she said come on bbc <laughs>
Kabir Khan were trying to promote a new religion known as the moderate Islam, where everything that Islam permits is prohibited and everything that Islam prohibits is permitted in this religion. So your opinion about that? I would like uh, Dr. Naik to tell all the Muslims that which is the most important aspect as far as Islam is concerned. You were telling about that 9-11 was an inside job at that time. Barkha interrupted you. How can you prove that 9-11 was an inside job? Soha made a comment on the show saying that majority of the Muslims are represented by the so-called moderate Muslims who are not practicing. And Brother Najib also added that they comprise of almost 99% of them. So how important is uh, the majority? I disagree with the comments made by Soha Ali Khan and by Kabir Khan say 99% are not practicing. Yes, he may not, he may be. If he says he is one of them, I have got no problem. But to say 99% are not practicing, I totally disagree. This is regarding Kabir Khan. He said that I am a Muslim, but I reject all the rituals of Islam. But Islam is in my culture. So what's your comment on that? Same thing, he says, I am a Muslim, but I reject the rituals of Islam. So how can he be a Muslim? As I say that uh, I am the bearded man, my father was not having a beard. MashaAllah. My so you are keeping out a free will. Allah. 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 Yeah, that is what I am saying. <laughs> my mother, she was not wearing hijab. And I got a five sister, Alhamdulillah, all they are wearing hijab. MashaAllah. You should give it my, to Kabir Khan. Yes, that is what I am saying to Kabir Khan only. Okay, my wife is wearing hijab. Her mother was not wearing hijab. So I can dua to Kabir Khan, inshallah, bismillah. Maybe his son will keep the beard and inshallah. his daughter will wear the hijab. Inshallah. If they watch peace TV, inshallah. inshallah. And I pray to Allah that may Kabir Khan also keep a beard. Inshallah. <laughs>
Sometimes a kind gesture can bring about a smile. A ray of light can deliver the joy of hope. But in this journey of life, what counts ultimately? The footprints you leave behind. Donate generously. Leave indelible footprints to promote the Creator's way of life for humans on Earth. Peace TV, the solution for humanity, welcomes your donations and zakat. Send your donation in zakat to IRFI, Islamic Bank of Britain, 394 Coventry Road, Small Heath, Birmingham, UK. Postcode B100UF. Thought code 300083. Swift BIC code IBOBGB22. IBAN GB52LOYD3096340102412. Pound account number 0113230101. Euro account 0113230202. US dollar account 0113203. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.org. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Spirit of Islam every Thursday at 6 p.m. UK and 7 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Asim Al Hakim. People tend to make the common mistake of looking for peace in far and remote places. But if we look a bit closer, we will find the peace within. For directions and messages that give us happiness and success, join us 
Mind Your Soul every Monday at 10.30 p.m. UK and 11.30 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Every father, he loves nothing more than to see his child better than him. Whether he's a boy or girl, we have to teach him how to respect his teachers, how to respect his classmates, how to be a good example. The best prize for our children we want is Jannah. All of us Muslims, we have really to have a target in our eyes to have righteous family. Let us strive towards a morally rich and good family. Join Hamoud Ashe Maimri in Towards a Righteous Family every Monday, 6.30 p.m. UK and 7.30 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother in Islam, Mandur Muhammad. You're watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum, may peace be upon you. My name is Brother Omar Dexter from the UK, and joining me all the way from Australia is Brother Musa Ser Antonio. We're both very honored and delighted to be invited to speak at the peace conference in Mumbai, and we'd like you to join us when we discuss our uh, beloved religion of Islam. We're both reverts to Islam, and we just met yesterday. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for the introduction, Brother Omar. It's amazing that it was only just yesterday we met, last night when I arrived, but yet there's already something between us which brings us so close together, and that's the brotherhood that we have in Islam. Alhamdulillah. So, do you think there's maybe a reason why we have a, a strong connection with such a brief meeting? Of course, the fact that we're both Muslims, I mean, we can really go anywhere in the world, we can meet Muslims all over the place, you can travel from China to Morocco, and you'll have that thing in common with the people. You say to each other, Salaamu Alaikum, how are you brother? When it comes time to pray, you line up together in the prayers. Mm. We speak the same language when we pray. We make the